We hadn't always been there, but the neighborhood has. Even before it was a neighborhood on Earth, this one had been there. And for those who would have been lost during those cursed grounds, here for those who have grown up and long die long before their actual real life actually truly begin. There are those that you never really want to grow up. We come from different times and we come from different lives, but one thing remains true of all of us as we lived on the earthly realm of a neighborhood. At some point in our lives and died a long time ago before our time was supposed to come true. We didn't rem don't remember much of our lives in the cul-de-sac since the last members of the group joined us. Certainly, we won't remember how the next spirit comes, but here's what we do know. Rolf was the first one to come here. Unlike most of us, he was born far off in the lands in the afterlife and hasn't touched his old word upbringing. He had lived in the neighborhood long before it was developed, the son of the shepherd, and he and with the rest of his family started a farm and was always on the lands that would soon turn out to be than in the sense place that we came inside. Now he died in 1903 while tending to the family's animals and with those bulls who broke from its pen and Rolf's efforts to stop the beast, he was trampled to death. That was even though through many of his family livestock with him in spirit. He chose us not to bring the cattle along and he chose to go on about the farm business on a daily biz basis, but is more than happy to occasionally just neglect them and play with the other children in the neighborhood. Johnny, on the other hand, was always a lonely child. In fact, Rolf actually became his first human friend ever, ever since he came to the cul-de-sac after his death. His parents moved into the grounds of Rolf's former farm, not long after his death, with no other children around and no field work to take part of the time, as did Rolf's. Johnny then drew it into his mind down to the great extent, from the plank he was born. Together, they were wandered around the countrysides, climbing the trees and getting themselves into trouble. Sadly, this didn't last forever, as a few years at later, Johnny became bewritten by with illness and died in 19. 22. He died after a long battle of tuberculosis. He had an imaginary friend named Plank stand by him till his last breath. He even now in the afterlife, without the countryside to play, Johnny was still wastes his time about his time for frolicking through the fields and the back yards and streets. Eddie was next to come. Eddie was born in New York City in the neighborhood of 1932 just as the Great Depression was hitting full swing. The neighborhood was well different. The beginning of the lake was the fields that passed the families and moved and split up the lands that had once belonged to Rolf's family. Always a schemer, Eddie always looked over for and would look to do anything, then to comfort his very bare family life, even if it caused him the friendship of others. Eddie died in 1939 after some of his grand plans to windle the sap backfired. He drowned across the local river after trying to run away from the angry kids that he had tried to be, be de deceived. Even though in the afterlife, he keeps on chasing after the mighty dollar. Ed and Sarah then came together not too long ago after that. But in the late 40s, the cul-de-sac had already begun nearly taking its final form of replanted developments, just as popular as post as a new era, war era. As the brother and sister grew up in the chaos in the World War II, they had both various ways of escaping their lives as children of a dead GI, and working to give her mother, Sarah became in range and controlling as she fought just to make sure everyone around her knows that she was in charge. All in attempt to copy off her the view of hustle and bustle, so of often a working mother, Ed on the other hand, went on about a different way. He just shut it off entirely, in fact, shut it out to, to nearly everyone and everything in the world entirely, becoming of what happened to be a complete idiot. Ed chose to be instead become a completely involved in the monster movies and comic books that begin to pop out in the, after the war had ended. It wasn't too long after this. In 1953, Ed and Sarah died in a car wreck as their mother was taking them to visit their grandparents. Nas came back after their time with brother and sister. Nas and it was a flower child, born of the pair of happy of hippies turned into establishment in the late 60s. She was naturally a beautiful girl that always had a day with the boys and men alike. She lived a life with him 
and would often go on about flirting and playing about any intentions. She died possibly in the most horrible way any children in the neighborhood. In the summer of 79, a serial killer who had broken in out of the local asylum had slipped into her house in the dead of the night and killed her along with the family. In the trauma of these events that were similar to Ed, shut out the world entirely and forgot her parents and her siblings, which is why the afterlife she doesn't receive much demands from the non-existent parents. Unlike the others, this gives her much more time to lounge around as a party as she often does. It didn't take long before Ed joined the rest of the neighborhood. He was a child of two highly controlling professionals in the age of greed and that. Despite the consistent absence, he demanded his life and became such an Ed, more popular and intentional rather than meek and shy figure. Always the curious type, he had loved the experiment and always given the time away from school for the consistent chores from his parents. As this could lead to his undemeaning demise in 1986, as a gas leak combined with the Bunsen burner from one of his experiments tore him and his house to pieces. Being the timid and observative type, between various misadventures, Ed continued to follow the written orders from his parents along with his death. Kevin was next to join the group. He was born into the day of Ed's death, and in many ways of his polar opposite. Kevin then came in and broke in the home, and even develop his tall, bold personality. In life, he was a cynical and angry and took it out on many other children. His father would rarely pay him any attention in life and would end up bringing back the end of it. In a drunken rage, his father had beaten him after Kevin attempted to stand up for him. He died on his way to the hospital in the winter of 1999. His father spent the rest of his life in prison. In the afterlife, Kevin had changed his perception of opposite of what his life really was. With a distant father who would, would show her, shower him with gifts. However, continued his maintaining bully even after his death. Jimmy was the next last one to come to the cul-de-sac and he died in 2000. Not long after moving into the house that Kevin's father once lived in. He had leukemia and ever since he was in barely old enough to walk. As such as he had been always a very sickly child due to his overprotective parents. He never got to be around other children. He lived out the days in a small bedroom completely neglected by the outside world. Jimmy lingered for some time now after the state after near death. But the family then caved into the suffering of his long illness. The Cranker sisters were different from the other citizens from of the cul-de-sac. They were never a fan of the earthly plane of existence. Instead, they were the children of the demons, not far dismissed or from the Sukubu Bay of human lore. They had seen the process abilities impossible by the standards of the others, such as ability to appear nearly everywhere, anywhere instantly. They went from sent to hell to torment and already tortured souls of the neighborhood. Surprisingly, they were attracted to the Eds for unknown reasons. Although this was specificular, since they were the weakest willed members of the neighborhood, and they were already easily targeted by them. Despite that, they were universally loathed and even feared by everyone, including the Eds. And that, my little pretties, was Cul de Sac, a um, Ed, Ed, and Eddie Fury pasta. My final thoughts of this story pretty good pasta, actually. Like, I remember um, hearing lots of narrations from, you know, other channels such as, um, let's see, oh yeah, um, Creepypasta Jr., I remember he narrated that one along with Uncle Coco, Seabass, um, Dave the Useless, Chesu, I think, um, I think another one is um, Master DK913. And I also do remember um, a f another narration by, well, Lady White Rabbit. I actually heard of this narration from lots of channels. And to be honest, I haven't watched Ed, Ed, and Eddie in like a really long time. But I would have to say it's a really good story for what this one is. I really do like how, you know, the concept of this story went out. I like the grammar, the sentence structuring. It is very believable about what had happened to Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Now, 
I did also hear Creeps with Pasta also narrated this story, and plenty of other uh, people have also narrated this, so it's a pretty good pasta, I'm not gonna lie. It's a really amazing creepy pasta. Now, I'm going to be completely honest, I haven't, you know, watched Ed, 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 Eddie in, like, years, so I definitely would have to say it's a pretty good pasta. I'm not going to lie right now. It's a really well-made story. It's fantastic, and I really found this one to be enjoyable. It's a pretty good concept for the story. Like, it's a really good fury pasta of what, you know, this happens to be. I still really found this one to be, you know, a pretty good, um, pretty good pasta. Really like this one, and I really have to say, this was actually a pretty... Pretty awesome uh, creepypasta, to be completely honest. So, um, I can't really say anything that I don't like about this pasta. Because this is, a, this is like an older classic creepypasta. Which is why I like these kind of pastas. Because, you know, they're not... What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. They're not cliched or anything. Not like um, most creepypastas does are nowadays. But, I still found this one to be enjoyable. It's a good creepypasta, it's really enjoyable, very well made, and I honestly found this one to be quite amazing. So, I really would like have to like how this story went out. It's a good fury pasta, and you know, I felt bad for all the characters in Ed, Ed, and Eddie of their past lives, which I definitely have to say, you know, it's pretty sad. I know some other creepypastas might have done this, but I still found this one to be, you know, enjoyable, despite the fact that, you know, it's a pretty, it's an edit edit creepy pasta. Now, what I'm gonna say is that I really do recommend you check this story out. It's on the regular creepy pasta wiki. Feel free to go check it out, and I'm gonna tell you now, you will not be disappointed once you see it. So, I guess with that being the case, that being said, I'm gonna sit here and wrap up the video. Like I'm gonna say right now, and like I always continue to say, this is just simply my own personal opinion, and if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regarding these creepy pastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of the story, it gets a 10 out of 10. It's a very enjoyable creepy pasta. It's a good fury, in fact. I do feel bad for Ed, Ed, and Eddie, along with the others, to of their past fates and all that. So it's actually one of the reasons why I really found this one to be enjoyable. Uh, the grammar was really good, along with the sentence structuring. Everything about this story was flat out awesome. That's what I have to say. <sighs> oh, pardon me about that. I'm a bit tired. Now, anyways, that being the case, and that being said, what did you guys think about this curry pasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what we have done person to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me down with your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when he uploads, so that way you guys won't miss an upload. And as always, uh, please roll the outro, because I'm out.